The greatest privilege in life is to know God. Our greatest privilege in life is to know God. That's not the title, but the title is Exchange in Our Worship of the Creator to the Creature. Exchange in Our Worship of the Creator to the Creature. How many of you were born in a Christian home? Your parents loved the Lord. That's the privilege I'm talking about. What a great privilege to have known our, our Lord and Savior. It's why I'm here, here today. It's probably why you're here today. What a wonderful privilege. Sometimes we allow sin to influence, come into our lives and influence us in our understanding of God and in all his many ways. And when we choose to turn away from the truth we know to be true, there will always be spiritual consequences as a result. And people made a lot of wrong choices today. We did too. We've made some and will probably continue to make some wrong choices. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul explained that humans often deny the obvious proof of God's existence and they become spiritually blind. In Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, we read that. Since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived being understood by what has been made so that they are without excuse. We're talking now about the beautiful creation. His beautiful creation. Even when they knew God, they did not honor him as God. Or did they give thanks? But they became futile in their reasonings and their senseless hearts were darkened. I want to look at four ways that God communicates about who he is. The first one is a natural revelation. I spoke of it. Creation itself declares it. How can you look at creation and deny there is a God? Even those who try to deny God are having problems with trying to explain how perfect the universe works, how perfect all the planetaries work, how perfect everything works. Even they have a hard time explaining that this all happened with an explosion and a bang. And so they're having to even find that there was definitely a designer. That designer, of course, we know was our creator. The Lord himself was the designer of the universe. The seasons. The incredible variety of fruits and vegetables. Look at all the diverse types of animals. Anytime you watch Animal Kingdom or National Geographic, I'm just totally amazed at how equipped animals are to do certain things. If one tail's pulled off, it grows another one. They even can change colors so they can adapt to their environments to keep them safe and protect themselves. It's amazing. All the creatures God has made, how diverse and how wonderful they are made. It all points to a very thoughtful and wise creator. Even the heavens themselves, full of stars and galaxies, declare God's glory and his power and his perfect order. In the evenings, I like to go out in a clear night and just look around. Wow, look at that cluster of stars. Hey, I see something there, some kind of a design. Now, I know that's one of the constellations but I can't tell what it is. I know there's something there. And, so, and it's usually at the same place every night. I know it's something. It's some kind of consolation because I can see it. But I can't quite make it out what it is. Amazing. Amazing. Paul referred to God as a creator. He did that to help his audiences to relate to the message for everyone's need for repentance through Jesus Christ. Secondly, our conscience. Our conscience. God has given each and every one of us an eternal sense, uh, like a inside 
guidance system, if you will. We were created in his image. God created us all with a conscience. Everybody's got a conscience. That's why the Bible speaks in the last days, some will have their conscience, what? Seared. You know what that means? Making the wrong decisions constantly until the point to where your conscience doesn't bother you anymore. Oh, how many people have done that? There's people doing it right now as we speak. They're living a lifestyle that's not appropriate. It's not God-ordained. It isn't a lifestyle God-ordained. It's a lifestyle they chose to live. And therefore, they're not under God's protection. God doesn't protect them. God has no obligations to protect them because they're living outside of his order, outside of the way he wants them to live. But he's given us all a conscience. That's why there's so many people that it doesn't matter what culture they come from. It's very common across the cultures to forbid murder, rape, or stealing. It's interesting that all kinds of religious cults and places that have this actually have their own common rule of law, murder, rape, stealing. You see, our hearts confirm that certain behaviors are morally wrong. That's our conscience. They're just wrong. We feel wrong about it. That's your inner conscience. Thirdly, Jesus Christ. He is creation. He was there when creation took place. Our conscience testifies that there's a God. But Jesus Christ was there. He saw it. It was God's best revelation of himself. Remember when they said, we would like to see the Father. Well, when Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen what? You have seen the Father. When you see me, Jesus said, you have seen the Father. The Father was revealed in Jesus Christ. In him, God took on human flesh. And he walked among us. He revealed the character and nature of the Father. Everything you've seen Jesus, that was the nature of the Father. As you've seen him, so I do. Jesus loved unconditionally. He forgave sins. He healed diseases. He taught his disciples how to live. He assured them of eternal life. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can experience that intimate relationship and friendship with him. And then the Bible. The best way for us to discover who God is as we open the scriptures is divine revelation. It shows us what the Lord's will is in the scriptures. It tells us of his attributes, of his characters. Sometimes it isn't always easily seen in nature or in creation. So we have the Bible to make it clear and we can see it there. Such things as his holiness and mercy isn't revealed in creation, but we can read it in his word. We see his holiness and his mercy. We're living in terrible times, perilous times, as the apostle said, it. perilous times. In the Old Testament, we have stories that tell us about these times, and even in the Gospels as well, we have them. We have letters in the early church leaders. We have the letters that speak of it. So the Bible is very clear. Man has turned away from the knowledge of God. He doesn't desire to know God. They don't want to know God. They've decided not. Look at what our government's done. How many of you ever uh, watch any old uh, movies, like to watch old films or old movies about some old cowboy shows? I tune in on them. Do you know what they do in the old cowboy shows that they don't do anymore? You could see him reading the Bible. They were shown reading the Bible, and they'd be sitting there, and what did they have? They had the Bible. What did they do before the eight? Huh? You don't see that anymore, do you? Absolutely not. In fact, our Bible study on the 24th chapter of Matthew, our Lord's Olivet Discourse, as he told his disciples on the Mount of Olives. That's why it's called the Olivet Discourse. 
it speaks that in the last days, all this stuff is going to increase. More and more people are being told that, well, Christians, they're just, they're just an old-fashioned bunch, and, and what they say is hate speech. The Bible basically is hate speech. The day's coming, and it's very soon. Churches will be shut down. They won't be able to have any kind of way that you can take your taxes off when you pay your tithe or offerings at the church. There'll be no uh, uh, nonprofit status. The churches will lose that. That's up and coming. You'll see that take place. You heard this preacher many years ago say your tax money is going to pay to have a, a uh, correction officer in our schools. Do you remember her telling me that 20, 30 years ago? I said that. Your tax dollars will pay for that. And here we are. Here we are. There'll be more, much more things coming. Many more things is coming. I, I, it's hard for me to watch it take place. Because I've seen it talked about in the Bible and the scriptures that it was coming. I can tell you this, we can't stop it, but we could slow it up. God has decreed we can't stop, but we can slow it up. We could slow it up. Think about that. Does prayer make a difference? Yes, it does. Second Chronicles tells you that. My people who call by your name will humble themselves and pray. I will heal your land. I will do that. But people need to humble themselves and pray. It's not going to happen by itself. We've got to make it work. We've got to make it happen. I'm thinking about that video, Elroy. I'm just ditching to play that. Maybe next Sunday we'll play that. That's an excellent. We had an excellent video we watched couple of weeks ago in Sunday school. It was just excellent. I told Dale to keep that because I wanted to play it for a worship service. It's an eye-opener of what's happening in our nation, in our land, in our churches. Maybe we'll do that next Sunday. We have anything going next Sunday? I guess I don't think so. Anyway, be sure to be here next Sunday because it's an eye-opener. Man has turned away from the knowledge of God. Every one of us has a basic knowledge of the existence of God. I spoke of it when I said we have consciences. As individuals, as churches, as organizations, societies have stopped acknowledging the sovereign rule of God. And as a result, look at what we've got in exchange. We kicked God out of the schools. Now what have we got? Huh? Every day there's something going on in our school. Six-year-old boy goes in and shoots his teacher. Knives, guns, drugs, you name it. It's happening in our schools. When we were in school, if you got chewing gum, George, I'd put it in your nose. Huh? Wasn't that rough? Yeah, that was tough. Real tough. It's sad, isn't it? And you know, it just, it just sort of creeps, along, creeps up on us. Little by little, little by little, little by little, little by little. And sometimes it takes the watching of an old cowboy show to see how far the pendulum has swung. Even people that don't go to church know there's something going on, and it's not good. It isn't good. I think we have a wonderful opportunity to share. When the, dark, when the night's the darkest, the light shines the brightest. It's a wonderful opportunity to share because people are hungry. They're looking. They're searching. They know there's something wrong. They can't quite figure it out because they're not church people, but they know there's something wrong. It's not good. Well, we know as Christians what's going on. God's still in control, by the way. Nothing happens that he doesn't know about. If you're not willing to acknowledge God and you make wrong choices, you're going to begin a path to destruction. In the past, there was many people who have acknowledged the Lord and had respect for him in the Bible. 
even if he didn't have a personal relationship with him. But notice how the wonderful, great, and beautiful inventions in the times of the 50s when people honored God. Are you listening to me? In the 50s, when people still honored God, look at the wonderful inventions that happened. Nice, wonderful inventions. Washing machine, <laughs> dryers, all these wonderful things that happened during the 50s when people still acknowledged God. Now what's happening? Turn the TV on. You'll see what's happening. Shootings everywhere. Someone's being killed. Malls, shopping stores, grocery stores. There's no place safe that somebody can't come in and just shoot. What a price to pay for kicking God out. What a price. It's a price that bothers me a lot. Because I have children that need to live in this, in this place. These things don't happen instantaneously. It comes in stages. There's four stages that can take a person or a nation down. The first stage is intelligence. We all have a partial knowledge of God through our conscience and the witness of creation. And although a lot of people have that capacity to understand he exists, they often close their eyes to the truth so they can avoid changing their behavior, you see. They don't want to change their behavior. They just want to close their ears to the truth in their eyes. That's what's happening to a lot of people in our nation. The second thing is ignorance. People begin to suppress the truth in their minds. They dishonor God. And so our Lord gives them over to the darkness of the heart. Romans chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. And those who deny the truth eventually come to the point where they are spiritually blind. They can't recognize right from wrong. Boy, I could go right into the book of Judges and talk about Samson. He was spiritually blind. And finally, they got to the point where they made him physically blind. Not only was he spiritually blind, he was made physically blind. They can't recognize right from wrong. The Apostle John put it this way. People love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil, John 3.19. Thirdly, indulgence. Searching for something to fill the void that was caused by refusing to acknowledge God. People freely engage in their earthly pleasures when we willfully choose to worship idols, and sometimes it has to do with popularity or money or some other poor choices. Young people, don't you go after these musicians and people who have terrible lifestyles. They might have some neat music that you like to hear, but watch their lifestyle. Watch it. Elvis made some beautiful songs, but what happened to Elvis? He was eat up inside. He'd go out, and he, had, he was a man of two hats. I don't have time to talk about him, but he had two hats. He wore this hat for the world, and he sang for the world. And then when he came home, he took that hat off and put his religious hat on because he was raised in a Pentecostal church. And he loved to sing gospel music. And when he'd come back from his big crusades he had all over the world, he'd come back to his home and sing gospel songs because he loved gospel music. It was how he was raised. It's how he was brought up. He was brought up in a Christian home. Sad. Just very sad. Fourthly, an impenitent heart, or a heart, that's on, or a heart that's unrepentant. But we use I here, so it's an impenitent heart. As people move further away from God, the Bible says the Lord gives them over to a deprived mind, verse 18. And so your, their judgment becomes impaired because they have suppressed the spiritual truth to such an extent that they are filled 
With all unrighteousness, wickedness, and greed, and evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, their gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient, parent, without understanding, trustworthy, unfeeling, and unmerciful. Does that sound like a description of our culture? Right to the T. Right to the T and dot in the I. The Bible is just up to date even quicker than the morning newspaper. These people are so immoral that they do not, that they, not only do they deny God's laws, but they also heartily approve of others who openly rebel against God's law. They approve of it. And they'll walk on the street and show you they do. This is the times we're living. Intelligence, ignorance, indulgence, and an impenitent heart. But thankfully, no one is beyond the reach of God's redemption. I don't care how far down the path of spiritual darkness you are, there is always the hope of salvation through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you are willing to turn to God, you can be assured he will accept you into his spiritual family and give you the assurance of eternal life if you're willing to make that choice and change your way today. If you're listening by way of internet, I hope this spoke to your heart. There's always hope if you're willing to make that choice and to choose him. He'll come in and he'll help you. He'll help you. When you can't help yourself, he'll help you. We can easily put our priorities and goals above our devotion. And we need to ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything in my life that I'm allowing to take your place of honor? Is there anything that I'm devoting myself and my time and my resources to more than you? If there is, please remove it. Please remove it. How can we intercede for those who are living in spiritual darkness. We can ask God to break through their ignorance, ask him to reveal his love and his goodness to them. That's how we can. We can pray for them. We can pray for them. There's probably someone in each family here that could use that prayer. They're not, they're not in church this morning because they're living a the lifestyle that they've chose to live. Pray for them that God will reveal himself to them, show them the way. All right, I need some volunteers. It's time to take communion.